Lesson 1. With the application open, click the new icon. Give the project a title, we'll call ours Lesson 1. Select the save location and pick a size. We're going to use 1024 by 768 and click OK. The first thing you'll see is the white background of the scene. In Opus these are known as pages. Onto the scene I'm going to add a div to be used as the background colour. Again in Opus divs are known as frames. So I'm drawing the div onto the page. Then I'm going to align it to the middle and centres. And then I'm going to name my objects. So we'll call the div background div and we'll call the scene menu scene now I'm going to add an image to the scene so I select the image option my image is on the desktop City of London and there's my image now I want them to be the same size as the background so I'm going to select the image control select the background going to right click on the background go to arrange size make the same size and I also want to align them to each other first thing I need to do is untick align to parent because I want to align to objects align to the left and align to the top and the two images are aligned now I don't actually want to see the whole of the image, I only want to see a part of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place the image into a group and use the group to conceal part of that image. So I'm going to right click on the image, go to group and group. You can see the image there is inside group 1. I'm going to select just the image, so the image is now selected. And I can move it and you can just faintly see the outline of the group which obviously is no good to us because we want to hide the overlap so I'm going to go click back on group go to the option that says overflow and select hidden and you'll see that part of the image is now disappeared so I'm going to click back on the image and continue moving it to the location to show just the part that I want I want that part and I want to hide from the other side so I'm going to select on the group and change the size of the group to about there. I've now got my image. I can lock the image in place after I've renamed it. Let's call this London image and I'll lock it in place so I can't change it. I need to move that group to the other side so I'll select the group, select the background and right align Let's give the group a name and call it London Group. Now before I carry on I'm going to click the Save button. And what I want to do next is I want to change the colours to give me the effects that I actually require. And I'm going for a sort of a historical look. So I'm going to select my image. I need to unlock it. Let's move slightly, let's undo that. Select the image and I'm going to use this setting to change it to a more antique look and that's the look I want. I also want to change the blue div so I'll select the background, go to there, select the colour of the div I'm going to pick it from the image that I've already changed. I'm going for about that. Possibly slightly darker if possible. Maybe there, that's the one I want. I'll relock my image. In fact, I'll lock the group and I'll lock the div just to keep them in the right places. Now what I want to do is add a title to my page. So I click on the text box move it to approximately the right position, set it to about that size and I'm going to call it the City of London. I'm going to right align that. 
Now I can edit the text in the floating box or I can go over to the panel for text over here and change text settings here which is what I'm going to do because I want to pick a Google font so I'm going to add the font I want and I want to use a font called quicksand so I select quicksand add it to the document click OK slightly too light so I'll make it bold and I'm going to need to increase the size to about 30 slightly bigger than 30 let's go to 36 that's about right I'll position it about there let's give that a title let's give that London title and I'll call it TB for text box so I know what it is underneath that I need to add a blurb so I'll add another text box position it and you can see the red alignment guide so I'll position it to the left of there size it to approximately that size and bring it down and I'm just going to copy and paste some holding text for now let's put that in probably copy that into there Control V I'm going to justify it I need to bring the box down to make it about the right size and nudge it up using the arrow keys to that's where I want it I need to change my fonts to match to quicksand and I think that's about right so rename that to blurb text box and we'll save it while we're at it so next we need to put in our buttons to take them to the different parts of our publication the first thing we'll do is we'll add the scenes we require so I'm going to make the scene area is slightly bigger and I'm going to right click and I'm going to switch to grid so I can see them in smaller size now I need five new scenes so I'm going to add a blank scene I'm going to call that scene I scene because the first attraction is going to be the London Eye I'll add another scene and I'll call that Palace because the next attraction is going to be Buckingham Palace my third scene is going to be Hyde Park so we'll call that Park scene fourth scene will be British Library so we'll call that library scene and our final scene is going to be the home of Sherlock Holmes so we'll call that street scene we can see all of our scenes set out here I click back on my menu scene and spotted a spelling mistake so we'll fix that while we're here menu scene and we'll save the publication again now before we continue and we add our buttons to take us to the different parts of the scene we need to make one quick change you'll notice that when we click on any of these scenes there's a value set up here called auto advance and that will basically mean that the page will jump to the next scene once whatever's on the timeline is complete we don't want to do that we want to control when we go to the next scene by using our buttons so I'm going to select all of my scenes if you use the control key I'm going to untick auto advanced and then we can see that it's actually been deselected on all of those scenes and it will only change scenes when we tell it to so we're back on our menu scene again and we're going to add our first button again we'll use a rectangular div draw it onto the scene and we drag and set we can set the left using the alignment guide and the right using the alignment guide 
we're going to need a color so we select the background color of the div and again we'll pick it from the image slightly darker I think that's about right I'm going to give it a title and the first place we were going to go to was the London Eye let's rename the button I'm going to call it IBT for short and I don't want it centered I want it aligned to the left I need to change the font to quicksand and also I'd like to give it a bullet point so I'm going to click back in again and you'll see the floating bar and I'm going to select a bullet from here and I'm going to use circles I also think it's slightly too small so I'll bring it up to 0.22 maybe 0.26 yep that looks better so I've got my first button I'm going to control C control V to create a copy align it correctly click in change my text this time to Buckingham Palace again give it a bullet point click out and check that's right control V again bring that down rename to Hyde Park add the bullet point you get the idea by now control V let's call this the British library bullet point and the last one our home for Sherlock Holmes 122B Baker Street with a bullet point now as you can see they're all left aligned but the spacing between them isn't quite right so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select them all I'm going to select them from here this time they're all selected I'm going to right click on my divs again I'm going to go to a range I'm going to go to alignment this time and I'm going to space vertically and you can see that the spacing between them all is now equal At this point I'll save again as these are buttons we're going to want them to react when the cursor goes over them so I'm going to select my buttons but before I do that I'm going to rename them so this is palace button this one is park button library button and Baker Street button select all my buttons and the first change I'm going to make is I'm going to change the cursor to that type however I also actually want more of a visual indication that they're changing so I'm going to change some CSS to actually make them appear slightly different when you move the mouse over them in order to do this I need to apply a class so I'm going to give a class name to all of these divs and I'm going to just use the class name button and if we check you can see that it's changed for all the divs in order to add classes we have to edit CSS write a tiny bit of code we use dot because it's a class give it the name we use which was button in this case we need the hover state and open and close curly braces and I'm going to make quite a simple visual change and I'm going to change the background color so we'll use the CSS background color and Sayola gives us some choices I'm going to use 
grey as a colour I could actually put a value in here and I'm also going to set it to important. Now with Sayola you don't always have to set it to important to override an inbuilt style um, but it's probably best to use it and the other thing is not all CSS will actually work in here the way you think it will work so it's a little bit of experimentation sometimes. If I save that I should actually see it reflected in the editor and I'm going to save the project. Before we add the actions to send our buttons to the different scenes we're going to preview our project in our default browser. We have three options. We can preview the current scene in the browser, we can preview the project in the current browser or we can export the project to HTML and load it up in our default browser. We're going to do the latter. So I export and I choose open. And it's loaded it into Firefox Developer. As you can see the project is the size we set it at and it's aligned to the top of the page. We actually want it to scale to fit the size of the screen and we also want it to be centered in the page. So close the browser and change these options. The first one we need to set is the auto fit that will scale it to fit the browser window and the second one is to center both horizontally and vertically by just choosing center. Save the project and again preview in the browser. This time as you see it's scaled to fit the window and it's actually centered top and bottom and left and right. Again close the browser. Now let's put in an action that sends the London eye button to the eye scene. So we have various ways of doing this. We can select the button and right click add an event handler or again with the button selected click the event handler in the panel over here or the third way of doing it is to click the action that we can see in the timeline. So I'm going to do right click event handler brings up the dialog button with all the different types of events that we can choose from. We want a mouse click event, we add an action and we need jump to scene in other actions and we need to specify our scene and the reason we gave them names as you can see is it's very easy to pick the scene that we want to send it to and we're going to choose I scene and we close. So now when we click this it will send us to this scene here. So let's go to that scene. Now as we left all the scenes blank we're not really going to know where it went to. So we're very quickly going to put in a very simple placeholder, double click in it, call it I and actually I'm going to add an action to this just to very quickly send it back other actions, jump to scene and I'm going to send it back to the menu scene. So if we save and publish and we open it up again we move our mouse over we can see the, the visible state change and if I click on the London Eye it takes me to the Eye page I click that it will send me back again so I know it works now I need to repeat this on all the different pages so close the browser click on there now the quickest way to do this is to copy all the event actions paste it onto each button and if you're paying attention you'll realize that that's going to send every single button to the eye scene so we just need to go in and change the scene it's jumping to. What you can also see is that all the buttons down here the event indicator has actually changed to orange to show you which of your objects have events on them. So we'll start with Baker Street and instead of going to the eye scene we will change it and we're going to the street one British Library, change that to Library, Park likewise 
And last but not least, Buckingham Palace scene. And again, we'll put an indicator on each one of these scenes so that we know we've gone to the right place. The easiest way to do this will just be to copy this one. We don't need to change the event because it's all going back to the main menu. And last and least. Street. So they've all got buttons on them that indicate which scene they are and the buttons will all send them back to the main menu. So save, publish, export and open. If I click the London Eye, go to the Eye scene, Buckingham Palace, Palace scene, Hyde Park, Park scene, British Library, Library scene, Baker Street, Street scene. So all our buttons work and take us to the different parts of our publication. Let's close the browser again, go back to the main scene. So that's everything that we wanted to do in this first lesson. And in the next lesson, we'll add some animation and look at resources in more detail. Thank you.